Today, class, we're going to be discussing how to handle a purchase transaction. Now, purchases actually can refer to just about anything that you've bought, but in a merchandising business, purchases refers to the merchandise that you have acquired for resale. It is actually the product or the goods that a business buys for the sole purpose of selling to its customers. So that is going to be a direct expense in the business world. So we're going to, first of all, kind of start out with a brand new uh, account that we're going to call purchases. And it's going to be handled just like an expense with a debit balance increasing on the debit side. Of course, when we purchase, there's a couple of different ways that we can handle a purchase. For example, we can pay in cash or we can charge that particular one and have it payable in the near future. So let's say, for example, and I'll just use really simple terms, let's say that we purchased something for $100. You'll see that purchases goes up here. Of course, we could then pay for that in cash, or it could be that we charged it to pay for a, at a later date. But one of those instances would take place. Now, sometimes you may be experiencing, and I'm going to say in this instance that we're going to pay for this with um, a charge. Let's say the next time you buy something, you're given a trade discount. Now, a trade discount would actually be, a good example of that would be like the loyalty card at Brookshire. It is a discount that's given to a specific uh, number or group of people. For example, you get up to the counter, you've got $100 worth of groceries, you have your $100 loyalty card, and you get 5% off. In that instance, you would have purchased $95 and you would have paid $95 in cash would be an example of that if you had a $5 discount. That is an example of a trade discount. So it comes directly off the purchase price and it is reflected directly through your cash or your accounts payable if you were charging. Now there's a couple of other things that we also wanted to talk about and that would be what would happen if you were to return something that you had purchased? Of course, let's think about that particular thing as uh, we're going to go off of this, this uh, $100 one that we talked about originally. Let's say that out of this $100 purchase, you are going to return... Um, $10 worth of merchandise. Of course, that would then decrease your purchases by the $10, and it would decrease the amount that you owed by that $10. Well, accounting purposes want us to always make sure that we keep track of everything separately, so we're going to have a different account called a purchase return account. That purchase return account would actually be a contra account to this big purchases one that we've already had. So in other words, this, this $10 right here is not going to be taken out here. Instead, we're going to consider it's going to be as a purchase return. Now, for future references, you would always have to have purchases. Less purchase returns would equal net purchases. Purchases less purchase return and allowance equals net purchases. With this contra account, you'll always see those two together. Never will you see those two apart. It's kind of this is kind of like a shadow to your purchases account. We learned a little bit about discounts. Uh, when we were talking about our sales. But purchases discount would be when you would get 2% off of your bill.
Otherwise, the entire amount or the net amount is due within 30 days. Well, of course, if I paid for it early, that would mean that it would actually lower the cost of what my purchase was to begin with. So let's say, for example, then, that I'm going to pay this bill that I owed of $100 off early. Why would somebody want that to happen? Well, first of all, if you are in business, you're going to want every dollar that you possibly can get off of your purchase dollar amount because you want to get more and more and more money that you'd be able to consider towards your bottom line. Now, these types of discounts are only available to customers who charge. They would never be available for a cash customer. This is also a contra account, meaning that it's going to directly decrease the amount that we have paid for purchases, but we're going to gather it all up in a separate account called purchases discount. So let's figure 2% on $100. We have $2 off. Well, in this instance, then, our cash would actually be written for $98. Our discount would be $2. So here's $98 here, $2 here is going to be a total of $100 on the credit side. My debit would actually be to lower my accounts payable by the entire $100 amount because I no longer owe that debt. So you would be forgiven for the entire debt for $100. Given the purchase discount, that would be the remaining cash that you would have paid. Of course, purchase discount is also going to be a contra account. It's going to always be reflected when you see the word purchases. So now it's going to take both purchases minus your returns minus your discounts equal your net purchases. We do have one more thing to talk about and that's going to be freight because freight is going to be an additional expense. It's going to also be included over here on the expense side of things. So I'll have one more thing that's an expense called freight. Freight's going to be handled like anybody else with a debit over on this where it's going to increase. So let's say, for example, on this one that I purchased something for $100 plus I had to pay $5 freight to get it here. Well, how would I write this particular one in? I'm going to have $5 in freight, I'm going to have $100 in purchases, and how much then would I pay in cash?